Our guest for today is the true definition of multi-talented and creative. She is a singer, a songwriter, a director, producer, filmmaker, and she has an award-winning documentary that's currently out just in time for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. It's titled Far East, Deep South, and it follows the story of her husband's family as they journey into finding out more about their past. It's riveting, it's touching. I can't wait to talk to her. Please welcome Larissa Lam. Welcome. Hi, Kat. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, like I mentioned, I watched your documentary and I was in tears so many times, so riveting. Um, I wanna know first, what um, inspired you to make it into a documentary? Well, you know, at first we took this trip to Mississippi in 2014 with my husband's family. And all I had heard is his grandfather and great grandfather were buried there. And we were going to take this kind of pilgrimage as a family to go pay our respects. And, you know, I had no idea like what I was going to expect. I mean, we didn't even know at the time where the cemetery was. My brother-in-law was just thinking like, well, it can't be that big of a town. We'll just go to each cemetery and see if we can find the grave site. And as people People will see in the film, we end up, you know, finding out so much more than just a gravesite. And I literally thought growing up in California, like I would find two Chinese men buried in Mississippi. And lo and behold, there was a whole population, families, generation after generation, starting from the 1800s that had been in Mississippi. And there was a museum in the middle of Mississippi. And when we were on this, you know, family trip, I'm like, what, what is going on? Why is there a museum in the middle of Mississippi? Because to me, that just meant it just warranted enough uh, history there to be able to document that many people. You're not going to put up a, his a museum for just like one family, right? There were so many families that contributed things to the, to, the, to the museum. And the fact that we all learn about segregation, we all learn about the American South, and nowhere in our history books do we learn about Asians being subject to the same laws and being there in the South. I'm like, other people need to know this. So that's why I decided to have the crazy idea to make a film. It wasn't just a personal account and documentary on your family, but it was so educational to me. I had no idea. And to see that there was a museum, I thought, wait a minute, there's more to this. And I love that you brought that into the documentary. I actually don't know where we are going and where we're going. Last thing I thought I'd ever find in Mississippi was a Chinese museum. I guess there was more than just my grandfather and my great-grandfather. When the Chinese first came to the Delta, they were treated like we were. Everything was very segregated. I mean, it was black, white. We were just really in the middle. Did you tell your father-in-law that you were going to make this film? <laughs> so my father-in-law, Charles, who's kind of the main subject of the film, he didn't really completely know we were making a film. I mean, as mentioned before, we thought we were going on a family vacation. We were just taking video initially on our first trip to, you know, document the family vacation like any good family does. I didn't necessarily anticipate to feature my father-in-law so much um, because I, I thought, oh, the history and all the discoveries are pretty cool. But let me see if I can not involve him as much because I know he's a little camera shy. So I did get him to sit down for you know one interview, and so I think he knew we were making the movie, but I don't think he realized how much of a focal point he was going to be. Um, and really, at the end, like when we did like test screenings of the film and early cuts, everybody kept asking, "What's Charles thinking? What's he feeling?" You know, it had to be about him because him growing up without a father in China and then coming here to the United States, separated from his family, was really the impetus for why we had to go find, you know, Mississippi to begin with, because he didn't know that his father and his grandparents had this whole life there that was so deep and rich. Yeah, it was. Um, I felt so bad for him because he he thought you know, my father didn't care about me and then come to find out it's this more complex story. And I was like, wow, and this is on camera. How did he feel sharing this with everybody else? And that's why I asked you that question. Yeah, and I think at some point, you know, you, they tell you, keep the camera rolling, keep the camera rolling, you know, in filmmaking, and especially with documentaries. And I think there were moments where I would ask him a question and he'd break down kind of crying because he's reliving the trauma and just the pain. And honestly, as an older Asian man, 
I think this was the first time a lot of the things that he told me on camera were he actually shared with anybody, you know, especially the emotions, you know, my, my, my husband Baldwin, um, who's in the film as well, and my brother in law Edwin, they both mentioned, you know, during our trip, he's like, this is like the first time we've seen him cry when we found a very important book. Not, I won't spoil what book it is, but we found a very important book in the museum. And that they said that was the first time they saw him cry. And then when I interviewed him and then he was crying like so much in these interviews, I think I have like two hours of him breaking down every like every like 20 minutes. I think he's like getting all choked up. And so we actually my editor and I actually had to be very careful because we want we didn't want to overdo it with showing him crying because then it then it gets a little be too much. And then sometimes it was just hard to understand him because he was just so overcome with emotion that he when he was sharing some of the stories. So I, I, I was just amazed how much he was able to open up to me. And I think it's because it was me. And when my husband asked some questions, he completely shuts down. So if you're trying to pry information out of your family members who are reluctant to share, the trick is maybe find another family member who they might like more. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you were there to get that all out of him. <laughs> um, you mentioned earlier about the research, and I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to go to Cleveland, Mississippi, and how are they going to find this cemetery? I mean, how was it really as easy as it looked in the movie? <laughs> you know what? It was amazingly I don't even want to say the word easy, but I mean, really believe, you know, God's hand was all over this because we needed some divine intervention here. I mean, in, in the movie, my, my brother-in-law, Edwin, does say he literally thought he would just drive around, look at a map, find the green empty spaces, find the cemeteries. Thank, you know, thankfully for Google, you can do that. You can find where the cemeteries. We're just going to hit up every single one because we just only had a photo to go off of. No idea where that was. And so, you know, Thankfully, he called City Hall, which he actually said was he was inspired by Parks and Recreation, the TV show, which is one of my favorite shows as well. And he kept thinking, well, there's probably a Leslie Nope type of person that's a character who knows everything about the city. So he just decided to call City Hall. And here's the difference between like a big city in LA or like New York. It's like you can call the City Hall there and they'll actually answer the phone and tell you stuff. <laughs> You know, there's no menu where you have to like push like 50 different numbers to get to somebody and then they'll say like they'll keep telling you to well talk to so and so and talk to so and so it'll be like 30 days before you can get a response and fill this form out. So no, he actually did get some he the city hall was the one who actually told him, hey, you want to check out the Chinese museum and also here's the information about the cemetery. So they were very helpful. And, and then finding people, I mean, like, I, I remember you were at one place and then you get a phone call. It's like, come back. I met someone. They want to talk to you. They knew so-and-so. And it's like, yeah. And if, if I think about it, I think the total amount of time for the first trip where a lot of those things happen, it was only six hours. I think it was like 10 in the morning we got there. And then by four in the afternoon, we were at the cemetery, you know, and, and all the stuff that you see in the movie happened, you know, in the meantime, you know, and we, and we and took a break for lunch, you know. <laughs> Um, and it was just remarkable. And I think part of it is the small town, you know, um, but it was just, it really was just an amazing um, first day where I took that as a sign from God, like, this is an amazing story just from a personal side, but then the historical side, I'm like, there's something here. And so maybe, maybe you should do something with the story. I thought it was just so fascinating and I couldn't even believe it, you know, because it felt like a movie. It felt like a movie when I was there. And if I had scripted this out like a, a narrative film, nobody would believe me, right? It really happened. And so I think that's also why I got the right idea to do a movie because I, I want people to experience what I experienced because if I thought it was incredible what happened, maybe other people will too. Yeah, it was incredible. And it gave me goosebumps a couple of times because I'm like, wait a minute, they just left. Somebody knows somebody and now they're touring and the people were so nice. They took you to the places, shared their mementos. And that was the other thing though that I learned after watching your film. It's like, I need to take more pictures and print them out. I need to keep <laughs> things. I, I forget this digital world. Yeah. Everything's on your phone because I mean, that's one thing I'm going to start doing more. And I always say it, but after watching your film, it's like, and I want to know my history. <laughs> yeah, we, we really hope that's a inspiration for people after watching our film is to document your family history and ask the questions while you have family members still alive. And somebody asked us recently at a, at a film Q&A, 
about like, yeah, what, what, what do you think is going to happen in this digital age where we can't even find files on our, you know, our hard drives all the time. It's like, what's the next generation going to look for? And so it is kind of a reminder, like, you know, use Shutterfly or just even your own printer and start to put together scrapbooks and mementos and time capsules again. They seem kind of old fashioned now, but, you know, when you see things like this happen where you could just pull out a scrapbook and that amazing thing, you know, in our film is one of the families, um, the family that bought my husband's grandfather's store, the Dunn family, you know, their father kept these wonderful scrapbooks and newspaper clippings. And, you know, I wrote an article for the LA Times recently, and I don't even have a copy of like the newspaper. I just have a digital and I'm like, I think I need to print it out. So like if somebody reads it in the future, future, they can actually see it. Exactly. For your kids. That was my other question. It's like, after doing this documentary, did it make you think about, oh, you know, you have your own family now. Is there anything you want to do differently for your kids and your kids' children to remember well, you by? Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that our daughter and my nieces, my, my brother-in-law now has two daughters, and they get the benefit of one having this very expensive home video <laughs> in the form of Far East Deep South to commemorate at least part of their family lineage. But more importantly, I mean, I think for our daughter, um, we really want her to instill a value in family history and just history in general. And I've already started to see the effects of it, the fact that she hears us talking about history. I never cared about history, I'll, I'll be honest, honest with you. I, I was not, you know, I liked English class. I can even deal with like math. I mean, I had to take AP English and I did well in it, but you know, you kind of memorize the stuff and then you're like on with it. And I think part of it is too, I think being Asian American, we didn't necessarily see ourselves in the history or feel a connection. But now learning about this and not just this chapter, you know, we are focused on the, the, the Mississippi Delta region there are Asians throughout history, all across our, our history books, but that are not written um, in America. I mean, we didn't just show up to build railroads and then disappear and then show back up again to, to be incarcerated in during World War II and Japanese internment, right? That, that's what our history books show us now. And so, you know, we, we really hope that people will also go and dig more history. Like, for instance, our daughter, we've started to educate her on, you know, Asian American heroes like Larry Itliong, who was, you know, the major Filipino American farm worker leader, right? And like, he doesn't have streets named after him. He doesn't have, you know, major things named after him, but they, he should. And like, these are prominent figures and leaders that we need to start putting back into our history because otherwise, you know, people are not going to know that the Asian American contributions run so deep and so long in this country. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was amazed to see or hear about the history of the Chinese and the black community and the segregation that they went through together. And I had no idea, you know, that there were Chinese in the Deep South. I just knew, OK, they were here for building railroad system, you know. And so this was educational. Is that what you want um, people to take from the film? Yeah, I mean, our big goal is to really impact the way U.S. history is taught in the long term. I mean, we just need to broaden the way we talk about different chapters in American history. And it's not like we want to replace or cancel other people's history or diminish anyone's history. Because I know sometimes people get threatened like, oh, no, that means that's less white history. And that's less black history. I'm like, no, no, we were all there in the Mississippi Delta together. And it wasn't just, you know, Chinese that were impacted by Jim Crow's. It was Native Americans. It was Mexicans. It was basically any person of color. They could have Jim Crow laws and they did have Jim Crow laws apply in different parts of the country. And so, you know, we want people to see that, you know, Asian Americans aren't just in one part of history and they're not just in one region of the country too because i think that's why you see all this hate and all this animosity towards the asian community because people think like oh we're a bunch of new immigrants we're the perpetual foreigner you know we we're coming over to take over the country and you know that's not the truth it's like we've been here the whole time it's just people didn't notice us and our history had been erased. And so we have as much of a claim to being American than somebody that's German American or Russian American. You know, there's, there's so much depth to our history that needs to be told and we hope we can be a catalyst for more of that happening. I love that. There is so much depth, like you said, and it's not that we were trying to erase other people's history, but it's like, listen to everybody that was there. This is all of our 
this is us. <laughs> this is our story. This is us. And I mean, even if you think of another major chapter in, you know, American history, the World War II, there were Filipino Americans, there were African Americans, Chinese Americans, Japanese Americans, you know, who were fighting for our side. And, you know, even though they were fighting against the Japanese, um, there were Latino Americans. I mean, there were so many people that were fighting for this country, but we normally only see, you know, one side. And yes, sure. The majority of the people were white in America, but there were so many other people that were part of the story that we want to make sure are included. Yeah, and I think it's time. <laughs> it is time. And we've seen the negative effects when it hasn't been included, because not only are we excluded in our history books, we're excluded from society, you know, and there's this false perception that like, oh, Asians are doing fine and see, they work hard and they do on this country, but we don't have any cultural influence right? We don't have political influence. You know, we don't even have a lot of entertainment influence. You know, things are getting better. There's progress. But these are the things where we've been kind of pushed to the sides. And, you know, we're hoping it's like, we're back. We're, we're here. We've been here the whole time. <laughs> I love that. Um, how do we watch the film? Please share with our viewers. Well, there are a few different ways you can watch um, Far East Deep South. Um, we mentioned we have a big campaign to do the influence the education system. So our film is available for licensing for education um, through our distributor, New Day Films. And if you are part of the university system as a student or faculty or staff, you can access our film through Canopy if your university has a subscription to Canopy. Canopy with a K. Um, and of course, the big news is um, during the month of May, it will be streaming on demand from May 3rd to June 3rd uh, for AAPI History Month. So please share it with your friends, organize a watch party, talk about it, ask your family members, shed a few tears. <laughs> yes, for sure. Watch it, learn from it, and then go out there and learn for, about your own history. It, yes, and you can stream it on pbs.org or on the PBS app. And of course, you can always find out some of this information on our website and follow what we're doing at fareastdeepsouth.com. And you can follow our socials on Instagram and Twitter as well. Thank you so much, Larissa. Always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much for continuing to, to shed light on so many important stories and, and so many different people that are doing amazing things.